call the April HRC meeting to order. And I suppose the first thing we need to do is roll call. Yes, so uh, commissioners, when I call your name, please announce yourself as, as present. Uh, Commissioner White, I think we, I think she's still trying to get back on with us. So, oh, can you hear us, Commissioner White? We can't, we can't, hear, we can't you. hear you. Is your, can you, maybe you try to log out and come back in? How about that? Try to try to log out and come back in, and that might work. Because Sylvia had to do the same thing. Okay, Commissioner Amberman, present. Thank you, Commissioner Hesseltine. Sorry, a uh, present. Thank you, Commissioner Rencia. Present. Thank you, Commissioner Thompson. Present. Thank you, Commissioner Gunn. I am here. Thank you, Commissioner Burnsworth. We didn't hear you. Let me go ahead and control the mute so we're not doing it. We're both clicking at the same time. Commissioner Barsworth? I'm present. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Stevens? Present. Thank you. Commissioner Ellis? Commissioner Ellis, are you still there with us? Yes, ma'am. I said present. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Chair Near Strickland? Present. Thank you. Commissioner Stanley? Present. Thank you. Commissioner Cubine? Present. Thank you. Vice Chair Jenkoff? Present. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Zoberman? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Anderson? Present. Thank you. And Commissioner Manco? Present. Thank you. All right, and that completes roll call. Okay, thank you. Um, I want to make a little adjustment to the agenda. I think Rabbi Zeberman would like to have a moment with us, please. Rabbi, are you there? Thank you so Rabbi much. Zeberman, your mic is open. Yeah, thank you so much, everyone. As you may know, today is the day of remembering the tragedy of the Holocaust. The Hebrew word is the Shoah, the Shoah that befell the Jewish people and humanity during World War II. We lost two-thirds of European Jewry, which was a third of the Jewish people. Men, women, and children lost in the guest chambers of the so-called most civilized nation on earth that worked very hard to devise guest chambers in which to murder a people that has been around since the beginning. And so we know, God, that the Holocaust has not been followed by acts of loving kindness. Atrocities and Holocaust of sorts are still being committed. And as a Human Rights Commission, I'm grateful to you for making sure that the light of love and kindness and humanity is still burning within us. And let us remember that even America, this great democracy, is at risk. Germany, too, was a democracy. And the events of January the 6th should alert us to the fact that Democracy, even in America, is being threatened. Thank you again, my dear friends. And let us just briefly pause for a quick second of silent meditation. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rabbi Zoberman. Uh, just want to take a moment to recognize that Commissioner Rivera has joined the meeting. Hi, Commissioner Rivera. And it looks like Commissioner White is back. Uh, can you hear us, Commissioner White? Yeah, I can hear you. And we can hear you. Okay, great. Um, I also want to take a moment to recognize that it looks like we have some citizens on the call with us. Uh, Mr. Need, is this you? Uh, yeah, yes, yes, this is me. Hi, um, thank you. Car. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm in the car right now, so just wondering if you guys can hear me all right. We can hear you just fine. We have citizen remarks at the end of the agenda. So when we get to that, I will call on you and, and you will have your time to speak. Okay. Mr. Need, are you still with us? Oh, yes. Hello. Yes. Okay. All right. Just make, making sure you know that we have our citizen remarks in the end and, and we'll get back to you. Okay. Okay. Great. All right. Thank you. I have another citizen here. Uh, Mr. Smith. 
Yes, uh, thank you. Hi, thank you. And once again, citizen remarks at the end of the meeting. So uh, when we get to that, we open the floor and you can you can speak. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, I turn the meeting back to you, Chair Nair Strickland. Thank you. Uh, the minutes uh, you received, uh, it's a small booklet. Uh, thank you, uh, Dominique, for doing <laughs> such a great job. Uh, if you've all read the, the small booklet, I'll entertain a motion to approve or if there's any changes. Uh, please raise your virtual hand if you would like to make a motion to approve the minutes from the March 11th meeting. I have a virtual hand up by Commissioner Amberman. Commissioner Amberman, your microphone is open. I move to approve uh, the minutes and I want to mm -hmm. congratulate actually Dominique for the outstanding um, basically recording of, us, uh, of a lengthy and important <laughs> meeting. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, does anyone want to second the motion to approve the minutes from the March 11th meeting? I have a virtual hand up by Commissioner Stanley. Commissioner Stanley, your mic is open. Second the motion. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Commissioner Stanley. Okay, any discussion or comments on the motion to approve the minutes from the March 11th meeting? Raise your virtual hand if you have anything. Let me check with our uh, commissioners that are on the phone. Commissioner Zoberman? Yes. Any any discussion or comments about the approval of the no, minutes? No, no, thanks. No, okay, no. okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Anderson, any discussion or comment? No, thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Mancall, any discussion or comment on the minutes? No, ma'am. Okay, all right, thank you. And I'm not seeing any virtual hands, so I'm gonna go ahead and do a roll call vote for approval of the minutes from the March 11th meeting. Commissioner uh, White? Approved. Thank you. Commissioner Anderson? Uh, Commissioner Anderson? We didn't hear you, your vote. Commissioner Amberman? Approved. Thank you. Commissioner Hesseltine? Approved. Thank you. Commissioner Rencia? Approved. Thank you. Commissioner Thompson? Approved. Thank you. Commissioner Gunn? Approved. Thank you. Commissioner Burnsworth? Approved. Thank you. Commissioner Rivera? Approved. Thank you. Commissioner Stevens? Commissioner Stevens, your vote? Approved. Thank you. Commissioner Ellis? Approve. Thank you. Chair Nair Strickland? Approve. Thank you. Commissioner Stanley? Approve. Thank you. Commissioner Cubine? Approve. Thank you. Vice Chair Jenkot? Approve. Thank you. Commissioner Zoberman? Approved. Thank you. Commissioner Anderson? Commissioner Anderson. 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 <laughs> okay. Approved. Approved. Thank you. And Commissioner Mancall. Approved. Thank you. All right. The minutes from the March 11th meeting were approved by a vote of 17 to 0. And the meeting turn back to you, Chair Near Strickland. Thank you. Um, before we introduce the um, first presentation, um, Dominique, did we hear back from uh, Captain Wichenthal? About uh, uh, Captain Scott Wichenthal is with us um, for oh, the meeting. Okay. Uh, and, but Captain uh, Shannon Wichenthal has not joined us yet. Um, Captain Wichenthal, your mic is open. Are you going to be uh, representing the police for the update on the College Week weekend? Captain Wichenthal, can you hear us? Okay, we might have lost him. Um, she did respond to my email and said okay. that she was all set, so she may be just running a little late. Okay. Well, thank you, Brian, for uh, coming to address us today. We're interested in uh, everything that's going on in the ocean front, the ambassador program, and some of your initiatives. So welcome and thank you for coming. Thank you, Chair Strickland. I really appreciate it. Uh, Dominique, if you're able to make me a uh, 
presenter, I can share my screen. There we go. Oh, okay. Do you want, I can just have it up on mine and go ahead. You can just instruct me to go through the uh, slides. Oh, okay. Um, Whichever that, you prefer. Is, um, it, it might be, it might be easier for you if I, if you should, if you let me share it and I'll uh, be able to roll through it or go back if there's questions, that type of thing. If it's not too much trouble. No problem. I would do that. Hold on one second. All right, I got it. Okay, you're all set. All right, there we go. Let me move y'all over here. All right, I think we're all set. So, um, thank you again, uh, Commission, for having me. My name is Brian Solis. I, it's been a little bit since I've been uh, before you um, related to uh, after action with uh, something in the Water Festival. Um, what I'm going to talk about today or what I've been asked to kind of address is uh, kind of the reestablishment of the city's resort management office. And um, I am a special projects manager with the city manager's office and my primary assignment right now is reestablishing this resort management office. And so I'm the acting resort administrator and I'll be hiring a permanent resort administrator here in the next few weeks. Um, and then working side by side with that person throughout the summer to properly onboard them um, before uh, moving on. But what I wanted to go over today was um, there was a resort management initiative that city council adopted uh, September 1st of last year. And just to show how much of a priority council placed in that initiative, they created a new department, a city office, resort management office, uh, mid-year, uh, December 1st is when they appropriated the funds to establish that office and when I was uh, moved over to, to start to pull it together from the organizational framework of it. Um, I'm going to talk about what the role is of a new resort ambassador program. They're already out there on the streets. The yellow shirts are out there uh, today and now. Um, give you an overview of that program and then Stand by for any questions or discussion you'd like to have about the program uh, moving forward. So if you're on your phone, this is going to be very hard to read, but um, if you're not and you have a computer screen in front of you, these are the seven um, main objectives of what was a resort advisory commission resolution that city council unanimously approved on September 1st. And it had the, the seven components um, I'm going to go over the yellow highlighted ones. Um, the first one was to set up a resort management office. I'm going to show you kind of the framework of what that includes, which, which council appropriated the funding for that on December 1st. Um, I'm open to any insights that the commission may have of, if you recall, the friendship patrols, which was a coalition, my understanding was a coalition of volunteers and faith-based groups that um, provided just a, you know a friendly face um, and a presence uh, in our resort area uh, proper um, to help complement the police's presence, and that was coming away from um, you know, that was basically in the 1990 time frame, 19 early 1990s time frame. Um, the other highlighted one is uh, to basically grow both maintenance and um, the overall coordination of how our resort management, our resort area uh, looks in terms of the public spaces and how we maintain it. And um, if we provide an extra layer of TLC, um, then people will respect the space more, the private uh, sector will invest more in their properties and everybody um, will grow together uh, in that enhanced environment. Uh, the other highlighted item I didn't touch on was the enhanced entertainment. So um, in addition to funding the resort ambassador program, um, city council um, has before their uh, consideration in the upcoming budget to grow the entertainment programming by 50%, 40 to 50% or so. Um, but Dominique, if anybody has any hands raised along the way, just stop me and I'm happy to address them, but otherwise I'll, I'll forge ahead. Um, organizational framework wise, it's really kind of a unique little office uh, because uh, 
it started from transferring out of the Convention and Visitors Bureau, the Special Events and Programming Division, which was eight employees. Uh, Jamie Capps, you might be familiar with her. She is the Special Event uh, and Resort Programming um, Manager. And then she has um, six event coordinators un under her, as well as an office associate that kind of responds to anything related resort, um, I mean, calls for service, and also helps with um, running the office. Um, they also have the annual service contract, which is in the three to uh, four and a half million dollar range, depending on the year for uh, providing Live on Atlantic, nightly entertainment, and some of the larger um, festivals um, in the city and for the city. Um, so those are the eight employees. They also approved for a new resort administrator and um, an administrative specialist, which that person is going to be more of um, creating the budget, managing the budget, uh, doing all the major financial transactions um, for the um, for the office. Um, we are in a new our new location, and Mr. Stevens was here a little bit earlier today, um, conversing with the homeless outreach. Um, uh, specialists that are here, at, at, we're at 401 Virginia Beach Boulevard, which is the southwest corner of basically Arctic Avenue and, Virginia, and um, 17th Street. Um, for those of you familiar with the resort, Republic Parking, the city's parking contractor used to be located out of here. Um, we have a new code enforcement inspector specifically for the resort area, and that is to uh, basically help the uh, businesses down here and, and residents um, stay up to code in terms of their storefronts, um, how they maintain their, their garbage, and um, um, graffiti abatement, and helping to coordinate that. We also have <clears throat> a zoning inspector specifically for the resort area. Kevin Hirschberger is currently serving that role. He also operates out of this office. Um, and he uh, enforces all the other city ordinances uh, that we have in the resort area. Some of the, a few, to name a few, and, and, and include the sign ordinance. It includes selling merchandise, you know, out on the uh, streets and the sidewalks and um, enforcing those type of regulations. They also approved two new homeless outreach specialists that operate out of the resort management office and a uh, million dollars for contracted service uh, ambassador program, which I highlighted it here because that's what we're going to, um, we got the ambulance passing here. Um, that's what we're gonna focus on today. So when you're looking at code enforcement, homeless outreach, um, and these employees, they actually, are employees of their department, Housing and Neighborhood Preservation for Code Enforcement and Homeless Outreach, and in the Planning Department for the Zoning Inspector. But I have agreements with those department directors that they, we work together um, in directing their work down here to enhance the resort environment. As you can hear, we are on the ground, we're right in the heart of the resort at uh, Arctic and 17th. Um, I also coordinate and generate work orders for maintenance with Public Works and Parks and Recreation, and we coordinate heavily with parking because park, parking has a big dynamic uh, in our surface lots and garages down here. And then, of course, with our public safety agencies, fire police, and EMS, especially with the ambassador program I'm going to go over. So um, we have a pilot uh, program conducted by Block by Block. If you went to blockbyblock.com, you would see that they are in 110 downtowns and resort areas around the country, from Santa Monica to Miami to Cincinnati to Lexington, Kentucky, where they uh, were formed, to the Tenderloin District of San Francisco, to the Bronx, to Philadelphia, um, Chicago, Minneapolis, St. Paul. Um, and they're, they're very, well, I have found them to be very good at what they do. Um, they provide, in our case, depending on how you categorize things, two to three types of services. Um, supplemental cleaning. So I could, it would take four hours to go over all of the maintenance and other services that 
various city agencies and their contractors provided the oceanfront. But it's still not enough for the um, level of visitation we received down here from both our residents and out-of-town guests. And so if you went down Atlantic Avenue today, it is being maintained at almost a Disney level quality. So they do manual cleaning. That's basically all little litter control. They have all kinds of uh, very effective equipment that's out of our office here and, and the garage here to help with, um, there's a thing called a billy goat, which looks like a lawnmower, but it's a very high powered vacuum. Um, there is something called an elephant vac, which looks like a golf cart that has a large suction um, street clean type of apparatus, but it's small enough and nimble enough like a, like a commercial Z mower to, to go at very tight angles. And that is to be able to further clean our wide sidewalks like on Atlantic Avenue uh, and the connector parks. We control, so all the little weeds in the, in the cracks and, and, um, and crevices of our sidewalks, uh, removing that, they are gonna be a more immediate um, mechanism to remove graffiti and decals that are all, all over um, the resort area, and that includes the decals on signs and um, utility boxes, uh, permanent marker small graffiti that folks write on to some of the larger uh, space of graffiti and um, working with our code enforcement folks on that. Um, out starting new today, uh, power washing. Um, the city already has large scale power washing from 17th Street to 25th Street and then 31st and 30th, um, 30th Streets. But this is as needed throughout the Atlantic Avenue corridor. Um, and their area of span of control is the corner of Pacific Avenue to the bike path um, parallel to the boardwalk from Rudy Loop, Rudy Inlet, all the way to the new 40th Street cul-de-sac under construction right now. And so they have a long linear um, space to manage. Um, so spot cleaning, you'll see special projects where, I don't know, they could be building um, landscape um, boxes or you know flower boxes to um, working to engage the, the businesses with um, um, just educating them on a new law that may have been enacted um, all kinds of different opportunities and some of them are are a list of their painting projects for example um, so we have a standard area if you look down the bottom which is a certain high, a certain higher level of maintenance and then from 15th to 25th Street, our busiest area that kind of parallels some of our, our large scale um, public parking areas, it's even a higher level of maintenance. And then you have hospitality and safety services. So the walking patrol of helping everybody uh, from anybody from needing directions to a lost person to engaging um, our homeless as a first point of contact and liaisoning with our homeless outreach specialists from uh, Housing and Amber Preservation to, they have something called a smart system, which is a handheld computer, looks like a smartphone, that logs in um, incidents of, you know, whether it be anything that they do, really. Um, if it is a broken street light, if it is a um, area that has, you know, a high density of homeless or transient folks there, um, if it's, a area that's a hot spot for graffiti. It's an area that, uh, again, the lighting is deficient um, or anything like that. They log it in, they bring it back to our office. We, it's a very dynamic work plan from week to week where uh, we have core businesses, but we're able to flex to address issues as they uh, arise based on what the smart system is telling us. Um, every day they're in almost every business in Atlantic Avenue just engaging folks um, there is a mobile informational kiosk that will be coming out that um, serves as an extension to the city's visitor information center. Um, you'll see, I'll have a picture of it here in a second. Um, and so it is just being a new uh, human reassuring presence um, in the Atlantic Avenue corridor. So these are their, um, you'll see that folks are already calling the yellow shirts. They're already out and about. They are fully outfitted for and ready for any 
uh, type of weather that um, Southeast Virginia will throw at them, which is a lot. Um, we've developed relationships with the Virginia Beach Hotel Association. I have to compliment Diana Burke and all the partners that have agreed to allow the ambassador to um, shelter there in case of a, a severe thunderstorm, uh, to come in there for a break or to use the restroom. Um, and in return, the ambassadors learn about the services and different types of businesses that are in residence that are on the Atlantic Avenue corridor and are able to educate um, or answer questions more insightfully of our residents and visitors that frequent uh, Atlantic Avenue. These two trucks, F-250s, have, um, this is F-150, but they're F-250s, I think, that uh, we are keeping behind the second precinct um, because they have um, power washing equipment behind them, the, the, the larger scale power washing equipment, and there's an easily identifiable number there if anybody has a service request. It also has rvbgov.com slash resort um, website on it uh, to get additional information about anything from event permitting to beach weddings to um, being a boardwalk vendor or, or what have you to find inf more information about us. These mega um, brutes are basically rolling trash receptacles where, um, I mean, the first day they came back, I cannot believe the amount of cigarette butts that they came back with and just shows you the level of cleaning that is occurring in the resort area now. Um, so they do not necessarily remove the trash per se from the um, trash receptacles. That's Public Works does that in the Atlantic Avenue corridor. But what they do is um, what, what they do is they top off trash cans that are overflowing. Um, we're trying to get Public Works to start using trash bags in the trash can liners, and, and, as opposed to just direct dumping the um, the trash cans. Um, into the back of the garbage truck. What this does is uh, it's, it's just a probably more sanitary or higher level of um, garbage collection. The ambassadors will remove the trash bag, power wash in the liner and the exterior of the um, trash can, then put the trash bag back in for public works to, to remove later. If it's overflowing again, they'll top it off. Um, and that way, the trash receptacle is cleaned almost every day. Um, Again, the thought being that the cleaner that the environment is um, in the public spaces, the more that people are going to respect that space, act accordingly, and the businesses are going to um, invest in themselves even more than they already do. All of these little incidents here of decals and um, um, graffiti, if they're not already going away, if you want down Lank Avenue, they will be soon. Um, these stained sidewalks are, we're trying to get the right things in place to be able to use the proper cleaning supplies that meet our stormwater quality goals. You can see drainage here. We don't want our um, chemicals to go into the basin, so we're having to um, retrofit power washers for uh, water reclamation um, that occurs when you have chemicals mixed with your water so they do not go into the storm drain. Um, they have at your service card, so they have leave behinds um, for and meet, engaging uh, with the businesses to uh, let them know that they're available and they're there to help them um, and to um, make them aware of all the services that are going on in the uh, resort area that they're providing. Here's that example of the kind of uh, mobile kiosk um, that will be set up in, you know, um, throughout the Atlantic Avenue corridor and, and, and different places um, just to be readily available for any questions that folks may have. A lot of, we had uh, Maria uh, Aragon come and brief as well as a number of CHC train um, the ambassadors about, in her case, what the Visitor Information Center uh, provides and she will be supplying them with the uh, various materials um, to provide our, our residents and visitors that may be come, coming down to the Atlantic Avenue corridor. So to date, uh, we really quick and real quick fashion got uh, block by block under contract. Um, the closest area they're currently contracting is for the downtown Norfolk Council. You will find for that this extra layer of service either happens in a theme park 
or a paid for basically space um, or a bid, a business improvement district. The majority of contracts that Block by Block has with um, different organizations are private business improvement districts. They have a few cities that, that fund them. In our case, we're doing that through the Tourism Investment Program. So um, they got the contract executed. They had a deployment uh, plan. They quickly were able to hire, um, which I was surprised and impressed with. Uh, in this environment, it's been difficult in the service industry to, to get folks hired up, and the hotels will tell you that, the restaurant industry will tell you that, um, and, but they, they, they're good at it, and they, they have done it. Uh, they put the branding in place. I just encourage you to go down Atlantic Avenue and you'll see the gold shirts, you will see their equipment. It's all branded to represent this service that is provided for, to you through your, through your tax dollars and the tourism tax dollars. Um, we have an operations manager in place. His name is Kelly Thornton. He is a, just a really good person and uh, the right pick for the job. Um, he works Tuesday through Saturday. Uh, and then they have team leads that are available, uh, team lead one, team lead two, that are available at all times when, when they are on shift. Um, the SMART system will help us develop performance measures um, that will help our office um, either prove that we are meeting intended results in a qualitative way, but also through metrics. And if we're not, then we're able to adjust our work plan to have that attended effect. And again, they, they're still hiring. If you know anybody that wants to be an ambassador, it's $14 an hour. It's in shifts. You can be part-time or full-time. Um, and you got to like working outside, though, and you got to like people. Um, so um, most recently, and this is, you know, as of a week and a half ago or so, um, just very intense training both in the classroom and out in the field. I know city staff, we had two and a half full days of training. I know they were pretty much brainwashed and they probably know more about what the city does than, than, than a lot of people. Um, but the goal was for them to be able to, for us to make sure that block by block is providing complementary services to what the city does and that they're not replacing what the city does. We are providing that extra layer of service down here. Um, so they are capturing what does the environment look like now? What needed to be addressed before this program got started? So they have a very, very solid foundation or a baseline to know what kind of impact um, they had and the program has to know what kind of value it had. Um, so for the first week, they were working conventionally nine to five, five thirty hours as a group um, together, gelling as a unit. Uh, before we sent them off, or block by block did, on their individual shift work, shift, shift work, which started on Wednesday, yesterday. And so Sunday through Thursday, 5 a.m. to 8 p.m., various three overlapping shifts, and then Friday and Saturday, 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. And so there's cleaning crews. The majority of heavy cleaning occurs from 5 a.m. to 10 a.m., 5 a.m., 10 a.m., 11 a.m., and that's when folks start to kind of creep on down to the oceanfront, uh, either out of their hotel rooms or down for a day at the beach. And that's when the kind of the heavy maintenance needs to get out of the way and um, the helpful services are then in place. And as the evening gets on, you know, takes on and the, and the crowds shift from, you know, day goers to night goers, they're trying to keep that positive vibe overlapping through the evening hours and into the night and just try to keep a positive atmosphere um, out and about. Um, like I said, they are still hiring. Uh, block by block. Work with blockbyblock.com. If you know somebody, you can email me as well, and I'll connect you to Kelly or connect them to Kelly. It's happened before and um, successfully, and um, happy to connect folks. And I'm talked a lot, so I'm happy to stand by for any questions you may have. Thank you, Brian. I, I think. Uh... Ron, you put a question in the chat box. Did you want to ask that question? Yes, um, I virtual hand is up um, from Commissioner Taylor. Commissioner Taylor, your mic is open. Oh, good evening. Um, 
uh, this ambassador program, uh, one of the things is, uh, what is the purpose of the services? Is it for to, what is the purpose of it? Okay, so the purpose is to, um, with the area that gets as high visitation as the resort area does, um, it gets um, a little run down, it gets um, more garbage or litter is out and about just because of the amount of traffic it receives. And um, this is meant to provide that level of service to address the amount of traffic that is down in the resort area. Um, and that's one purpose. The second one is to be helpful, uh, to be helpful for uh, the number one issue. If you talk to any Virginia Beach lifeguard that goes on during the summer down here, um, the number one issue is uh, lost people. Not only lost children, lost adults, and um, how that's networked and so uh, throughout the resort area. So it's anywhere from providing directions to helping with lost and found, lost people, to um, homeless outreach, providing supplemental services for that as well. So that's the, that's the gamut of it. I kind of went over all the services they provide, so that is the, that's the purpose of it. But um, it is the highest visited area in Hampton Roads, period. And so when you have that, you, you need that extra layer of service to complement that. And it's just years of not having that that um, you're starting to see the effect down here if you if you walk Atlantic Avenue. Okay. And the, the other question is, because uh, I put it in the chat was, Will this uh, your service do not uh, entertain or 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 entertain the the amount of violence down there at the ocean front? Commissioner Taylor, uh, do, 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 so the question are you saying um, what about the enter entertaining piece? In, in other words, you know. Uh, like after 11 o'clock, I think your your service is in at 11. Well, that's Correct. when everything riles up down there after 11. And then that's when criminality sometimes takes uh, effect. And because uh, the young people don't have nowhere to go, nothing to to uh, keep their capture their attention. So that's when all the 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 illicit things go on for the most part. So. I'm looking at is 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 this one of the services that that your ambassador service can can help the ocean front out on after eleven o'clock at mid you know eleven o'clock on because uh, I understand what you're cleaning up and all that that's fine but we have things that go on after eleven o'clock that needs to be handled and that's yes, why sir, I say. I hear you. Yeah, and I'm saying I, I I thought maybe it was uh, part of your services to help curb the violence. You may not be able to stop it, but it can curve it down. You see what yes, I'm saying? Yes, sir. And that's why on that's why on Friday and Saturday they go to 11, and they really don't clock out to 11:30. But um, at that point, let's face it: for the most part, uh, most folks that are out there, they are out at drinking establishments, right? Right. And um, and you said criminality. And at that point, they are not law enforcement. Um, so they, you put them in a in a space where they don't have any any real authority. Let's face it, they don't have any real authority. Um, and so what we're trying to do is create the environment that is positive as much into the night as we can okay. before yeah before the police and other public safety have to address any criminality. And I'm not saying that we can't flex in the future. If we're saying, hey, we are seeing that they have a positive impact, say even from 10 uh, p.m. to 11 p.m., and we think we should extend their services, we can certainly do that. Okay. Yes, sir. Th thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Commissioner Taylor. Okay, I have a virtual hand up by Commissioner Stevens. Commissioner Stevens, your mic is open. Yeah, Brian, and, and we've talked immensely about this program, the block by block and interaction with the homeless. Um, and I think that's something they'd probably like to hear how, you know, because I know you're hiring two more people to work out of your office to work with the homeless down there. I spoke briefly with the current 
employees that are there and their interaction and the block by block interaction. And I spoke to their their hiring manager today too while I was down there because I had that opportunity. And I came out feeling very comfortable on what she had to say based on their training. And I I spent a lot of hours researching this company. So I asked her about these couple of instances I did read about and I liked her answers. But I, you know, I think commissioners like to know how how that works and how you know block by block will interact with the homeless to the outreach workers because I think that's an important factor here. Because again, I think the human rights commissioners worked very hard to make sure homelessness wasn't a criminalized situation out here. So I, I I'm I'm can tell you that I'm comfortable what I'm hearing. I haven't interacted with the block by block, but I'm definitely in contact with the outreach workers I have assigned to the oceanfront currently, but I think it'd be good for them just to understand how that process works. So on the on the high level, and, and I, as I've shared with you before, I'm I'm no expert in um, homeless outreach, the homelessness um, strategies, but I, I have tried to educate, uh, be educated on the latest approaches, both from Andy, from Ruth, from you and your and your outreach uh, group that you coordinate uh, separately through Dallas Stamper. And um, my viewpoint of it is, or, or my, my understanding is that the ambassadors would in a lot of ways be a first point of contact. Um, their training is in line with the outreach specialists from housing and neighborhood preservation in that um, for the most part, um, seeing it as being a resource, if, if they need uh, any type of services, um, a first port of contact, and then a liaison with our homeless outreach specialists that are here. So that, that's the extent of it for the most part. If there are um, criminal, if there's criminal behavior that is going on, they will also, if it's criminal, they know to radio back here, and then if it's it's really egregious, yes, they, they will leave on with police. But for the most part, if there is inappropriate behavior, um, but it's not criminal, they too will still report back to the housing um, and with the homeless outreach workers here. So they're really just a first front, a first point of contact, a friendly voice point, a point of contact for liaisoning with the specialist is my understanding of it. Okay, did you have anything more to add, Commissioner Stevens? Uh, your mic is open. Uh, there you go, it your is. mic is open. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. But I, I did, those are the questions I asked today because, um, again, our concern about the homeless out here and the block by block people do recognize that you know they are the front line to everything that's out there so their their purpose and they're hoping to build relationships with the homeless out there so if they feel good about what's going on and a block by block person has an issue with a homeless person they can work it out within with them to move them on or whatever they need to do um I think, you know, right now I'm comfortable, but I will be following it and I'll be watching what's going on. Brian, I'm not sure once you have full time outreach workers, what would their hours be at your office? So, so um, my understanding of it, and I'm going to, um, so I'm no longer sharing my screen, right? So let me, let me pull that up. Um, because I do have it because it is, it, you would think I'd be able to, be able to remember, but it's, it is. Um, it's different, uh, and in order to reach reach our population that that we're trying to, so uh, I don't want to misspeak. So I'll tell you right what from Pam Shine's So can I share my screen again? Is that possible? Uh, let me go ahead and give you presenter uh, one more time privileges. Are you all set? Did you get them? Uh, let's see here. You should be. You should be good to go to to um, share now. 
That's okay. Um, I don't know if I, well, actually, let me check. Um, I am. Okay. So, um, I'll dig on. Here we go. So Monday, to, uh, Tuesday, Thursday, 7.30 to 4.30, they have an approach that, um, as to why these are most effective hours, and, and you know, I'm sure they could listen to feedback if you don't feel like they are, but, and then they have non-traditional hours of Friday, 6 a.m. to 3 p.m., Wednesday, 1 p.m. to 10 p.m., and then Sunday, every other Sunday, 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. And then um, they have a weekend number if there's anything that occurs um, outside of that. And um, I believe that number, well, there's a regional housing hotline, but um, in any case, these are the hours that they're planning on keeping in, in this office. Okay. Uh, did you have any other questions or, or comments, Commissioner Stevens? No, like I said, I've, I've been following this very closely. I'm comfortable currently what they're saying, so we will. We'll go from there. Like I said, I think they've trained the block by block people very well, and the outreach workers are very comfortable with what they're doing. So it seems to it seems to be right now good. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank Brian. you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Stevens. I have a virtual hand up by Commissioner Amberman. Commissioner Amberman, your mic is open. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Solis, for the presentation. I'm very excited to see that you will have a professional group. Uh, you know, uh, I was one of those members long time ago, the volunteer uh, in the Friendship Patrol. And so I know, uh, you know, that it is a good uh, effort by the city to do this. But as you know, when, um, and, and those members, as most of the people that volunteer in that capacity, know uh, it was free. And, and of course, we need to have a consistent present uh, that can be only provided when it is, you know, by paying uh, those uh, the personnel, but um, as a city that is making an investment in these services, I would like to know what are the specific areas that your department is seeking to give uh, a report later on on the improvement. Because actually, when you talk to your workforce, I'm sure that there is already a vision as to what is it that we are expecting, and unless we have that clear understanding, uh, then, you know, we may not have, uh, and I feel that, that the community uh, is going to be later or sooner or later asking for that. And then the other question is, uh, do you mind telling us what is the makeup of the workforce that you're hiring? Because uh, we like to see members of the broad community represented, including you know, the, the minority representation. So can you talk a little bit about that? Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Um, so it was the first question um, more about uh, reporting out on um, our impact. Was that what the first question was? Um, yes. How, you know, how, I, I, okay. Yeah, how your department uh, seeks to present uh, to the rest of the community, you know, that the investment on this particular effort is good because, as you know, uh, we are supportive of uh, making sure that the police department has uh, enough resources and so forth. Uh, and then to add to that, um, I think you mentioned also that there will be communication in instances where the intervention of police is going to take place. So, can you tell us what the process? And that uh, situation is going to be. Thank you, too. Yes, ma'am. All right. So I'll address that as a third question. The first question, um, absolutely. So as I kind of touched on a little bit in the presentation, we have a baseline of what the environment, um, you know, at least physically looked like before the ambassador started their work. Um, we we have the metrics in the smart system, the handheld of different incidents or areas that need to be addressed by work orders. And then I would think by about the first quarter, we'll be able to, um, you know, the first three months, determine what kind of impact we had just from before and after photos, from interviewing with folks, which is more qualitative, um, and then the metrics from the smart system. And, 
you know, after the first year of the resort management office being up and running, typically what the city does is budget management services department is we create performance measures that we report on every year to make sure that the, the office or the department is having its intended impact, not just the resort ambassador contractor. But to answer your question, on a quarterly basis, we should be able to, you know, report out on the metrics of, of things that they've impacted in a positive way. Um, in terms of the workforce, they're a contractor, so, you know, they have um, national labor act standards that they have to abide by, but in terms of um, their workforce, uh, I've observed that it's um, diverse, um, but in terms of percentages and what the nationalities or ethnicities of their workers are, I do not have that information, but just visually I can, I can tell you that it's um, relatively diverse workforce. I'm happy that you know, you're welcome to come down here and um, meet um, any of the workers at any given time. They're in and out in shifts, uh, but um, my view of it is it's pretty diverse. My, my goal, my personal goal is, um, it's, you know, that our workforce should reflect at the very least um, our community. And that's, you know, as a general rule of thumb that I try to keep, but their contracted service, it appears to me they're trying to do the same thing. Um, in terms of liaison with police, it's funny, right? Right before you answer that question, our resort liaison officers, um, her name, the one I just met, there's, there's, there's Sergeant Nick Ball, and Charlotte Mayberry is a, she is a uh, recently uh, appointed resort uh, liaison officer. They just came in here and uh, we're just touching base with, I have my door closed because I'm on this call, but with Kelly Thornton, who's our resort investor um, operations manager. And just about what's going on this weekend, what's going on now, uh, just developing that relationship. But the overall protocol is a direct line from Kelly or the line supervisors to both the non-emergency police number and the emergency in the second precinct emergency number as needed. Uh, it's, 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 it's that simple. And I think over time, um, the relationship will get even stronger where there's um, just more interaction and, um, I wouldn't necessarily say that the resort ambassadors are an extension of the police. They're more of an extension of our residents. They should be a reflection of our residents and and the city as a service um, is, is my approach to it. Uh, and thank you so much about, uh, you know, the, the, regarding the answers. Uh, I, uh, before I let you go, I guess, I, I just wanted to bring up that one of the issues that I think for residents of the city of Virginia Beach would be is that uh, families want to feel more comfortable uh, going into the beach, especially during the late hours of the evening. And I think seeing the increment of families at the ocean front, it would be a way that the community will feel that there is some improvement in that regard. Thank you so much. Yes, Commissioner uh, Abraham, I appreciate it very much. That is the intent. Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Abraman. Uh, I have a virtual hand by Chair Neri Strickland. Oh, you, you're, you just put it down. <laughs> It is. I just wanted to. We've already taken up about an hour's worth of Brian's time, and I, unless there's any um, other questions, and if you have others, I'm sure he'll take your phone call anytime, right, Brian? Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. And um, thank you so very much for the presentation. It was very enlightening. I'm glad to see that uh, you're like the first line of defense, and there's so many layers. I think it's a, a good program. So I, I thank you very much. Anybody's have anything else for uh, Brian right now? Uh let me check with our commissioners who are on the phone. Commissioner okay. Zoberman? Uh, no, no. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Anderson? No. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Mancall? No, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Uh, I have a virtual hand up by Commissioner Stevens. Commissioner Stevens, your mic is open. Yeah, I just want to let everybody know that I've already seen a big difference as far as keeping it clean and cleaning up the trash. It's a, a huge improvement. So I think, you know, the families will feel comfortable 
with what the work is going on. I'm, I'm, I'm amazed as quick and as fast as they're getting on this as far as cleaning up the trash and everything. And I think that'll make a better resort for everybody. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Stevens. I have a virtual hand up by Commissioner Stanley. Commissioner Stanley, your mic is open. Yeah, I just wanted to thank Brian for the, the great presentation and why we've got you. I think Commissioner Amberman's um, just input from us about just being mindful of the demographics um, being reflected. I think that would be good input from the Human Rights Commission uh, because it sounds like you do have quite a few positions um, left to hire. Um, so thank you for taking that, um, that counsel. Yes, ma'am. Thanks, Commissioner Stanley. I appreciate it. Well, well. Uh, one quick thing is, um, I, I was going to put it under my report, but since Brian is here and he may have to duck and run, is that um, I think you got an email about um, a proposed wristband, and I've already talked to Brian about it. Uh, I think we're going to try and order um, maybe a thousand or so and give to the ambassadors to pass out. And you've seen it's uh, we'll have the Human Rights Commission on it, and then one of the three sayings. Um, Something about togetherness. Um, I think we've got a choice of about three or whatever you might come up with. But I thank you, Brian, for um, considering to do that. Uh, the, it was it was a big hit for um, I say big hit for 5:31. And back in 9/11, um, I just happened to run across this. The Human, Human Rights Commission. We did um, these were. I don't know if you can see that. It's so bright. It's a card with a little flag on it. It was from us. And we took them by the thousands and handed out. And oddly enough, some little thing like that made people feel better. So hopefully this will work too. And I thank you for working with us on that. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Um, Captain Wichenthal, um, I know we've left you not too much time, but uh, if you want to give us a quick overview of your expectations for uh, week 17. Yeah, we're, um, can everybody hear me? We can hear you, yes. Okay. Uh, we've got a little difficulty this year because we've got two possible two target weekends for week 17. If you go, or college beach weekend would be a, probably a better term for it. Uh, if you go by the calendar, that should be the end of this month, but we're receiving information that there may be a college beach weekend uh, starting to form in May. So we've got both of those dates on our mind. Uh, on our radar in a sense, we're watching it. Uh, we're upstaffing in a sense for that. Uh, we're watching the hotel uh, registrations. The unfortunate part is now with the lift of the COVID restrictions and everybody basically having probably cabin fever, all of our weekends are showing uh, so far the hotel registrations are pretty well booked. Uh, the, the bad side of that is it, it makes it harder for us to determine which weekend would be the kids coming. The good side of that is, is the kids have a tendency to uh, not be planners. So our thought process is uh, the first weekend is three weekends out, three weeks out. Um, college age kids have not thought about making uh, hotel reservations three weeks out from when they're traveling. Uh, so our thought process is those, those hotel rooms are not booked by kids, but we're still monitoring social media in that aspect. Uh, so we're watching both weekends. Our upstaffing is going to consist of of uh, all of our special operations personnel will be there. Our, you know, of course, we'll have our mounted uh, for that. Uh, we're going to do that. And what I'd like to to recommend to the to the to the council is that the commission, excuse me, is that uh, maybe we be prepared to do observers for both weekends. And uh, as we get closer, we can cancel uh, as opposed to waiting to the last you know week and realizing that there's problems coming up um, or that the weekend's coming up and that we should start scheduling people for it. Uh, if, if, the, if the commission's uh, on board with that. Yes, we, we, ha we do have uh, a meeting scheduled, right? Dominic, when is that? Yes. Correct, Monday the 12th at 3.30. So that's what my, my recommendation is that we do a uh, a light weekend with observers uh, schedule for both. And uh, if if neither one of them, if one of the weekends doesn't materialize, we cancel the observers. Uh, and the worst case scenario is that we, we, we continue with them and then we find Friday night that we have no kids out there that we're watching each other. 
uh, that we can cancel it at that point, or they can continue to come just to see what our activities are as, as the city government is providing, because obviously you'd be seeing services that Brian's office is providing as well as ours and fire and EMS as well. Okay, thank you, Captain Wichenthal. Um, let me just say, can I, can, let me, I just want to apologize for, uh, Shannon was supposed to be here, but she's in a meeting. Uh, there's some pro coming up this weekend scheduled and she's in a meeting planning for that uh, to discern what the department's uh, response is going to be uh, for that for the weekend and, and it got I was there too but I, I came out of the meeting to come on this uh, she obviously needs to be there I'm the night CEO where she's the commander of the precinct so it's more important for her to be there uh, to do the manpower allocation and resources distribution and all so that's why I, I came out to come on the meeting and she would have been here but she's still in that Yes, uh, give her our appreciation and, th and thank you, Scott. Anybody have any questions? So please raise your virtual hand if you have any questions for Captain Wichenthal. Okay, uh, let me ch just check with our commissioners who are on the phone. Commissioner uh, Zoberman? No, nope, no. Nope. Thank you. Commissioner Anderson, any questions for Captain Wichenthal? No, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Mancall, any questions? No, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Okay, and I don't see any other virtual hands. Okay, uh, thank you, Scott, and I will let you get back to your other me. Oh, you want one other thing? Just one other thing I'd like to talk about, and I, I talked about to you, Sylvia, is, is the chief is with. I'm 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 working nights now, so I work uh, seven at night to three in the morning, and uh, I'm the night CDO, and I'm not upstairs with the chief's office, so I'm not sure how much of a it's appropriate for me to serve as the liaison. I know the official liaison on paper is is Billy Zelms, and he's doing he's in charge of our technology bureau now. And to say that he's knee deep in work is probably an understatement. Um, he's uh, probably you know head deep in work in that sense. So the chief has made the decision to to go back to the executive level, and he's uh, he's asked uh, Deputy Chief Dean to serve as the liaison to the HRC. Uh, Deputy Chief Dean, we had the conversation with the chief earlier, uh, and he and the chief pulled in Deputy Chief Dean and asked him, and he said he'd be more than happy. But he had or already had an engagement for today, but you should see him at future meetings, and he'll be involved. I'll still be involved. I'll still poke my head in and out, um, and with being Nate CDO, I'll still work as a, a role uh, for the uh, the abat the uh, observer program with you all as well. Great. Yeah, we don't want you to go away, but thank thank mm -hmm. you for the information. All right, thank you very much. Um, moving moving on with the agenda. Um, I guess that's the uh, kind of chair report. And uh, just briefly, I, I only had, um, you've already gotten uh, copies of the wristband and we can talk about that a little later uh, if you want, uh, or you can just um, send in your, your favorite or if anyone has, if anyone has any uh, objection to doing that, um, I can't see why you would, but if you do, um, is there anyone that objects to us giving wristbands out of the ocean front? My, my intent was that they would be shown and proudly because I, I walk around sometimes and people still have their VB strong bracelet and they'll hold it up for me. And I was hoping this would be a, just a kind of a little echo of um, peace and love and although um, Peace, love, and flowers and butterflies seems a little 60 ish. Um, we'll do something more progressive, but um, uh, it can't hurt. Does anybody see any reason why we shouldn't do that? Try and put out a, uh, about a thousand. Did we say about a thousand? Um, mm -hmm. It's a very small budget. We can get them in before College Beach weekend, whichever. And just budget. to see how it goes, start off with a thousand, I, I thought. Right. Anybody have any comments or? I'm not seeing any virtual hands. Um, uh, let me check with our commissioners. Oh, I see a virtual hand by Commissioner Hesseltine. Commissioner Hesseltine, your mic is open. I'm so, I'm so sorry. I kept I had to look for the right button. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it's a great idea to really support it. And um, as far as comments, I mean, I think Commissioner Anderson did a great job with Stronger Together. That would be certainly my vote. Um, and I, I think it, I mean, it, it, it plays off of, of Unfortunately, the unfortunate events of 531, but I, I think she nailed it. I think that was perfect, stronger together. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Hesseltine. 
Um, anyone else have any comments or? I have a virtual hand up by Commissioner Stanley. Commissioner Stanley, your mic is open. Yeah, just a point of clarity, um, uh, uh, Commissioner or Chair, is part of the the goal of the wristbands to be also lifting the um, existence of the Human Rights Commission so that folks know that. Uh, I mean, is that besides spreading goodness and love, which I think is critical right now? But is that is there sort of a twofold goal in in that you know presence of having the Human Rights Commission do it? That was just my. Yes, absolutely. From my point of view, that's what it was, which is why one side says Virginia Beach Human Rights Commission and the other is our slogan, uh, stronger together or better together or whatever we um, decide. Thank you for that clarity. Appreciate it. Thank you, Commissioner Stanley. Um, any other questions or discussion? I have a virtual hand up by Commissioner Amberman. Commissioner Amberman, your mic is open. Uh, no, I just wanted to support, uh, you know, the choice that Carla stated. I think uh, that was the very best. Any foundation is actually to uh, promote the work of the Virginia, uh, the Virginia Human Rights Commission. I think spelling the name, especially when we have people from out of town, would be extremely important rather than just the initials of our commission. True. I think so, too. Well, that sounds like it's um, pretty much a wrap. So we'll see how it goes. Um, the other thing that I had was um, we, of uh, course, you uh, you saw that I got a lot of uh, links to the letter um, that was in the paper by Bobby Matheson, um, and I'm glad that we already had our letter in the mail, so to speak, uh, supporting the um, increase and in asking for the city council to support increased funding for the. Um, the Virginia Beach Police Department. Um, I don't see anyone here from the Sheriff's Department, but um, I understand um, the Sheriff will be making a similar request. The other thing is volunteer hours. Um, don't forget your volunteer hours, and I think Rod is still with us, but I, um, if you're a liaison uh, to another organization or another commission um, or uh, group, I think those hours uh, hey, can no. you see me? Um, is that right, Rob? I'm, I'm, I'm freezing up here. Um, Do you like something, Dominic? Where'd Rod go? Uh, sure. I am here. Um, I was getting a low bandwidth uh, note. Are you able to hear me? I can. Okay. Can okay. I. I I turned off my video because WebEx was showing low bandwidth um, in hopes that um, you can hear my audio. Sylvia, I heard most of what you were asking, but would you get to the part where you asked me a question one more time? Yes, sir. Um, <laughs> we, since we ha we do a lot of desk work, um, like reviewing the police um, use of force policies and uh, doing some research, and we also have so many liaisons so many people going as liaisons to and from different organizations. So when we turn in our hours, um, I count those. I to make sure that those are those legal hours to be counted toward volunteer hours. I think that's appropriate. Um, uh, number one, um, no one's being, none of you are being paid. Um, so uh, uh, precision uh, and, and hair splitting, I don't think is necessary. I think if you're reviewing the documents, if you're going to the meetings, not because you're a member of another group, not because you have an interest in it, but you're looking at this, but for you being a member of HRC, you wouldn't be doing this. That sounds like volunteer hours for HRC. Thank you, I agree and my, my um thought behind all this is we will eventually ask for pay. So um, <laughs> good luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> all right, thank you. That's um it looks like Dominique is no longer with us, but um I she apparently designated me as the substitute host. So I'll do the best I can. <laughs> um, and she's probably trying to rejoin us as we speak. Yeah, so Rod did completely crash. I'm running out there to help her reset it up. So she'll be back in a hot second. Okay. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Well, in that time, um, I had um, wanted to make another adjustment to the uh, uh, agenda. And that is moving uh, because everyone's kind of here and um, Teresa's uh, 
liaison report requires a consensus uh, from us. So, Teresa, can you um, explain to us what you'd like from us, please? We can't hear you. Oh. All right, used to Dominic unmuting me. <laughs> okay, so everybody can hear me? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so um, in my role as um, liaison to, and when Dominique gets back or Rod, I guess you can let her know, I do want to make just a little correction to, you know, it's, it, it's actually the pastor leader community police relations table is the exact um, name of that group. And it's always kind of, we always kind of add a round table to it, which kind of gets it a little bit confusing with the African American mayor's round table. But I want to make sure that everybody's clear about um, where this ask is coming from, it, which has been in concert with so much of our work. This table has existed since 2015. Um, working, uh, it was a result of one of our forums where we um, said we would help with remedy with improved community police relationships. Um, especially working for productive, constructive change. And as you've heard many times, there have been lots of um, forward progress in that to include reinstatement and mediation, um, all kinds of work in minority recruitment efforts, um, uh, the um, racial profiling data that, that is now going to be online with the police communi uh, communications. But under the category of transparency and um, improved relationships, you know, overall, as you all know, the IRP has come up a few times and uh, this group has continued to stay in dialogue with the police, um, continuing to just kind of go through the process and they are now, um, many of us have been participating. And so they have um, asked us, Dr. Coleman, who is the facilitator of that table, uh, is making a request um, that, and this this has already been agreed upon, but we as human rights commissioners step back from the vote because we don't vote, we just attend the meeting. But now they are asking for our support, and so it's an opportunity for us based on, first of all, you know, a lot of the last meeting we attended where we have been updated on all this information, and especially with all the tragedy um, that has befallen us in the in the past couple of weeks, continuing to move toward human rights and respect for all, meaning police and the community as we work together. So the the opportunity for uh, us is uh, a motion that the pastors leaders community police relations table request the support of the Virginia Beach Human Rights Commission in our efforts to encourage city leadership to bring community stakeholders together to create the best possible IRP, which is, stands for investigative review process, uh, panel or slash CRB, which um, that is uh, citizens review board. Those are kind of inter, you know, changeable, but they're right now, that's what we're calling this process for Virginia Beach. So I will read that to you again. Um, it is the pastor leader community police relations table requests the support of the Virginia Beach Human Rights Commission in our effort to encourage city leadership to bring community stakeholders, stakeholders in the community together to create the best IRP, you know, CRB process for Virginia Beach. So I'd like to put that in motion form because um, from our standpoint of furthering human rights, we're always about full inclusive involvement of the community, making sure stakeholders are invested and in building trust, uh, you know, being engaged in the, um, the work of creating remedy for the community together and always being responsible that this is our, our duty as people trying to further human rights um, for the city. So um, I don't know if uh, Sylvia uh, put that into some kind of, I'd like, that would, that is my motion. It was uh, that request. Do I need okay, to get so There's a motion on the floor to uh, have the Human Rights Commission write a letter um, to support and the continued uh, dialogue with the community in regards to a um, IRP or a citizens review panel. And it's just so that that. Is there a second? I second the motion, Sylvia. This is Beatrice Sanderman. Yes. Did you say second it? Yes, Ben. Yes. 
Okay, this was a motion second. Discussion. Uh, does anyone have any? I'm back, by the way. Um, okay. any, <laughs> um, any commissioners have any discussion on the motion on the table for uh, the Human Rights Commission to encourage city leadership to bring community stakeholders together to create the best IRP CRB process for Virginia Beach? I have a virtual hand up by Vice Chair Jencott. Vice Chair Jencott, your mic is open. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, I'm not real clear on the motion because it, I I heard something different from Sylvia and then um, Teresa um, after you made what I think was the motion, then you shared other information. So can we can we be real clean about it? Because I don't I'm trying to get, actually get a hold on what we're asking what Cer they're asking us. Certainly, Dominique. Um, she she reworded the the motion exactly, but I'll do it again. Uh, and it, she, she can just read it. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> Thank and you. It, it was just a, a letter of support from the Virginia Beach Human Rights Commission to encourage city leadership to bring community stakeholders together to create a, the best IRP CRB process for Virginia Beach. Thank you. That's exactly it. Thank you. Bonnie. Thank you. You're welcome. And I think those words are from uh, Dr. Coleman. Is that or the group? Yeah. Pretty much about the same. And yeah. I, I, in the letter and all of you will see it before it goes out, but it will, I know, I know that the city is attempting to do that. Obviously, with um, the African American round table and other organizations. So, um, the dialogue is ongoing, but we just wanted to emphasize that we're encouraging it is what the letter is really going to mean. But we'll include what Dr. Parrott um, wants, not Dr. Parrott, I'm sorry, Dr. Coleman. To me, doctors around here. Yeah, this doctor. is Dr. <laughs> Dr. Veronica Coleman, you know, Veronica they, Coleman. Yes. as the facilitator of that table. So we can vote or we can just say, does anyone have any objections to doing that? Uh, I have a virtual hand up by Commissioner Amberman. Commissioner Amberman, your mic is open. Uh, yes, I just wanted to, um, I, I just wanted to add uh, the importance of the stakeholders to be part of this dialogue. And as I mentioned in our previous meeting, and I think everybody heard me, I, I don't know of any Latino or Hispanic members of the community that are participating in those discussions. And it, it behooves us that we have, uh, you know, a comprehensive uh, discussion so that we don't hear this, uh, these issues again by the community at large. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Amberman. Uh, I have a virtual hand by hand up by Commissioner Hesseltine. Commissioner Hesseltine, your mic is open. Hi, thank you, and thank you so much for uh, Commissioner Stanley for bringing this forward. I, I'm just curious. Um, I, I think you know you and I've chatted. I think my feelings on this. Um, is there a reason why they're not? Why it's so broad that they're not asking for? Um, a, I, I guess I think an IRP is certainly different than a CRB. Is there a reason they're not asking for a CRB and, and putting both in there, or is this meant to be this this broad for right now? It's meant to be this broad so that it's fully okay. inclusive, um, okay. but clear Got that it. It, the ask is all community stakeholders. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Commissioner Hesseltine. Uh, I have a virtual hand up by Commissioner Amberman. Yes, Commissioner Amberman, your mic is open. Yes, I just wanted to, to say that the prerogative of naming uh, the board or the commission is upon city council, but we just want to make sure that there is diversity in that discussion and that the community partakes in the decision making process. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Amberman. Uh, see, I have a virtual hand up by Vice Chair Jencott. Vice Chair Jencott, the mic is open. Thank you, Dominique. Um, yeah, I would uh, agree with this. Um, if Sylvia is allowed to be the person that does the fine tuning on the wording of it to include the diversity, um, and also it, as long as um, Sylvia gets to do that and we get to take a look at it, I would be very in favor. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair Jenkins. Uh, let me check with our commissioners who are on the phone. Commissioner Zoberman? Nope. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Anderson? 
Any comment or discussion on this motion on the floor? No. Nope. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Manco? No. Nope. Okay, thank you. I have a virtual hand up by Commissioner Amberman. Commissioner Amberman, your mic is open. Yes, just um, you know, for the sake of making sure that uh, the letter that reaches all all of us out, it's uh, you know, with a uh, comprehensive input of of Teresa, I would suggest that actually the chair uh, could work it out with Teresa so that we can have uh, the issues that were lifted up by the community members addressed, and that way we don't have repetition of efforts and, and going back and forth. Uh, and, and that way, I think it would be very effective for all of us. The final version. Right. I always send the letter via email for your input or correction. So that'd be the same. But I, I just realized we can't be consensus because there's a motion and a second. So let's do a vote. Okay. All right. I am not seeing any other virtual hands for discussion on the motion on the floor. So let me repeat the motion again. It is a letter of support from the Virginia Beach uh, Human Rights Commission, uh, encouraging center leadership to bring community stakeholders together to create the best IRP CRB process for Virginia Beach. Okay, with that, I will begin the roll call vote. Commissioner White? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Amberman? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Hesseltine? A very enthusiastic yes. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Rencio? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Thompson? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Gunn? I'm sorry, can you repeat the motion again for me? The motion is a letter of support from the Virginia Beach Human Rights Commission encouraging city leadership to bring community stakeholders together to create the best IRP CRB process for Virginia Beach. Okay, split. And your vote? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Sorry. Thank you, Commissioner Gunn. No, it's okay. Uh, Commissioner Burnsworth? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Rivera? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Stevens? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Ellis? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Taylor? Yes. Uh, repeat that again, Commissioner Taylor? Yes. Thank you. Chair Nair Strickland? Aye. Thank you. Commissioner Stanley? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Cuban? Yes. Thank you. Vice Chair Jenka? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Zoberman? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Anderson? Aye. Thank you. And Commissioner Menko? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so by vote of 18 to 0, the motion uh, for the Human Rights Commission to write a letter of support encouraging city leadership to bring community stakeholders together to create the best possible IRP CRB for Virginia Beach was approved. All right, I'll give, uh, turn the meeting back to you, Chair Nair Strickland. Uh, thank you. Next on the um, committee reports is the awards committee. And uh, David was having a, a little problem getting here today. He said he'd join us late, but uh, has he joined us or I'll just go ahead with the report. Yeah, he hasn't yeah. joined us yet. Okay, which is my report is actually Dominique is doing. <laughs> this is Dominique's project. So do you want to bring us up to date, Dominique? Uh, I had just had a meeting with Valerie today just to go over the program outline, which is in the minutes because I, I sent the minutes out to you all. Um, and she just has a few suggestions and questions that um, we'll be talking in detail at the next uh, uh, awards committee meeting. But she's working, we're going to be working with the video team to get their schedule starting June so we can see when people can get in to, to uh, tape their segments of the program. 
Um, she said, so Sylvia had a question if a teleprompter was going to be available for the scripts. They have one of those. Uh, she is also going to be talking with the city photographer to look at backgrounds and different backdrops that we could possibly use. We have been, we already have our banners, both uh, portrait and landscape that we can use during the video. And um, now it's just a matter of getting the schedule right. So then we can fit everyone in and then choosing the nominees and, and who's going to be um, our honorees for this year. Have we picked who's going to deliver us to food to us while we're doing this? <laughs> well, we maybe it works something down with that. See what kind of if we can get some little treats or something for you guys when you're there. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, I have a I have a virtual hand by hand up by Commissioner Burns with Commissioner Burns with your mic is open. Yep. Thank you. Um, my portion of the award ceremony is the 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 fifth the the slideshow at the beginning while people are just waiting on the event to start. And we decided that we would like to have photographs from um, work that we're doing in the field. So if you are um, a commissioner who is a liaison uh, to a group, um, if you could take can with they can be with your phone, uh, but just candid shots of the group working, not posed uh, group shots, but candid shots of the group working uh, or uh, actions that we are taking as a, as a human rights commission. If you could send those to me, then I will align them with quotes about human rights um, and, and put those into a slideshow. So, any, and you can send them at any time. I'll just drop them in a folder for when I'm ready to uh, put that slideshow together. So I'll send an, I have Dom, Dominique send a, an email to remind you, but I wanted to kind of give you some background of, of why we're asking for the photos. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Burnsworth. And um, I will be sending out a doodle tomorrow for when the next meeting is. Okay, thank you. I have a virtual hand up by Commissioner Cubine. Commissioner Cubine, your mic is open. So the award ceremony will also will be in December again. Yes. And, um, when will you be selecting the nominees? When will the committee be selecting the nominees? That's with the meet the doodle poll for the meeting that will occur in that meeting, um, which will probably be in the next couple of weeks, and then in at the May. Um, full commission meeting uh, that those nominees will be presented to everyone. Yeah. And, and um, then that will they, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Continue, Commissioner and, Cuban. And uh, when they're presented to everyone, then is is does the whole commission vote or just the nominating committee? The whole commission votes as well. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, we have um, we have the committee meeting, and um, that's going to have to be closed session. So, um, Rod, if you could um, give me again the instructions on how to do that, um, you don't have to be there. I don't think, do you? I, I don't believe I need to be there. Um, I will provide a script to Dominique. Um, it's. Having a closed session in a virtual meeting is challenging, um, but I will talk with Dominique about uh, the best strategies to uh, do that successfully and legally, and we'll get it figured out. Okay, because we'll, we'll be doing that twice, once with the committee and then with everyone. But yes, thank you, thank you, Rod. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Rod, and uh, back to you, Chair Nair Strickland. Yeah, anything else about the awards or we'll move on. Uh, let me check with our, our commissioners on the phone. Uh, Commissioner Zoberman? Nope. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Anderson? No. Okay, thank you. And Commissioner Mancall? No. Okay, thank you. I have a virtual hand up by Commissioner Stanley. Commissioner Stanley, your mic is open. Just two quick questions. Uh, do we have plenty of nominations? And uh, I mean, because usually that comes out before the commission and gives us a sense of whether we've got enough of that. And um, 
and uh, is there anything else you need? And the only other thing I wanted to lift in to Commissioner Burnsworth is, you know, usually Joe, I'm sending tons of pictures, but everything has been on Zoom this year. Everything. I, I mean, I, I, so, you know, I've got some actions in the community, but nothing like what you're talking about. So I don't know if that's going to be a struggle for others. I just wanted to, I wanted to just lift it so that. Is that, is that was that discussed at the committee level? No, but I think all, uh, some older pictures won't hurt. Um, is that okay then? If you it, okay, yeah. if you need old pictures, you'll let us know. Okay, thanks. But are there plenty of nominations? Yes, yes, we have a good pool of nominations. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. okay. Anything else? Uh, I just okay. Okay, I have a virtual hand up by Commissioner Cubine. Commissioner Cubine, your mic is open. Is there a limit to the number of nominees that we will put forth? We have never used a limit. Um, we pick the uh, those that are most deserving, and we don't really have limits. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Cubine. And we, no, I have no other virtual hands up. Chair Strickland. Okay, great. Thanks. Moving on to, um, I don't know if COVID-19, if you've noticed, I think um, Ginger went to doing it uh, monthly um, at the, in, in the wrap up and Beatrice, I don't know if you have any updates from the state or anything that you want to share. Uh, Commissioner Amberman or Vice Chair Jencott, raise your hand if you have anything to share. Okay, I have a virtual hand up by Vice Chair Jencott. Your mic is open. Thanks, Dominique. Um, yeah, I, now that we're in the vaccine portion, uh, I was just wondering what you guys think. It sort of felt to me like reporting the cases more, the cases and going to a monthly comparison with that chart might have more meaning. Or do you, would, do you, anybody feel like we don't need to report those cases um, and that longitudinal anymore? I, I'm just looking for some feedback if I should keep doing that or not. I'm open. Okay. Um, Commissioner Amber Amberman, did you have anything to ask uh, a response to that or add to the re committee report? No, I respond to, to Ginger. Uh, I don't know for the rest of the uh, committee members uh, commission, but uh, for me, uh, I think it's a, a good way to measure uh, the basically the services provided to certain communities because I have uh, a lot of concerns. Uh, it may be uh, not only about cases, but Ginger, if we can include vaccination rates um you know on onto that uh, you know i i think it would be very useful thank you all right well i will take a look at the vaccination rates and how um how that i can blend those things so that it may have some meaning for us um as we work with all of our communities thank you thank you and, and just uh, uh, what i wanted to share is actually you know a, a few things um as you know uh, the seven uh, day moving average of new cases has remained uh, firm throughout the month of march according to the data from the virginia department of health and uh, it says that the covid 19 cases in virginia uh, is currently 1468 uh, which is a huge drop from the winter months but still above uh, what the, the numbers were in last uh, summer's peak. And Dr. Dani Avula, who is the Virginia vaccine coordinator, attributes an increase in the cases to the younger unvaccinated adult population. He explained that the state continues to see cases plateau over the coming upcoming weeks and months, but uh, there is no surge in hospitalizations and deaths and so um, the one thing that I feel excited about is the fact that FEMA is now in our area offering services. And uh, I just wanted to mention that th that may make the largest difference to date, because as I shared with all of you before, I am very concerned that the registration 
process for vaccinations is hard on some uh, community members, especially if we took if we talk about um, people that maybe say that don't need that don't know how to read or write, people that don't have internet services and in, in, in their places and so forth. So uh, seeing that there is now FEMA is offering a portion of the day uh, uh, on their vaccination schedules, um, availability for people that could come and, and register on site. I think that is extremely important. Um, and I just wanted to share additionally that on the 15th of this month, uh, my organization and others are having a conversation, a one hour conversation meeting with the governor in which we are going to uh, basically convey the concern that we still have. The Latinos are the lowest number of unvaccinated individuals in, in, in the whole uh, Commonwealth of Virginia. And um, so we are hoping that some of the recommendations that we're going to put forth which is one one of those to allow Latino servicing uh, religious communities, churches, etc., to host events in their sites. They will increase that uh, capacity for serving, you know, uh, members of that community. Also, to make people aware that there are uh, a few people in our community that have said that they were charged two hundred dollars when they were uh, vaccinated. That was pretty surprising to some of us because vaccination is supposed to be free. But once that word spreads around, then people are fearful that, well, I don't have insurance. It may be because I don't have insurance, I cannot access the vaccination. So those are areas that we need to work with. And especially because we know that uh, certain populations are the basic workforce out there being in contact with many other people. So in order for us to really uh, make a dent on the pandemic, we have to make sure that uh, people are vaccinated. And then the other issue is that the reticence of some uh, members of our community to get vaccinated is uh, the fearfulness of the um, basic allergic reactions, things that they have heard. And so we feel that allowing the one-time vaccine of Johnson & Johnson to members of the community that actually many members in the Latino community work seven days a week. And believe it or not, uh, from sun up to sundown. And uh, so they don't get time free to basically step out of work and, and go make a line or, or even have the transportation to get to the places. So all of those things, we want them to be into account, so we are recommending that there uh, may be support for our community to actually have events on a Saturday, Sunday, or perhaps after working hours uh, in some of those churches. And, and, and you know, again, the one-time vaccine, which allows people that are working and don't have too many hours free to just come and get vaccinated, we feel that those things can make a difference and we hope that, uh, you know, you all have contact with the department. We need not only FEMA to be working on this, but I think the Virginia Beach Health Department and others to uh, take into account these, you know, broad uh, needs in the community. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Amberman. I have a virtual hand up by Commissioner Stevens. Commissioner Stevens, your mic is open. Yeah, one of the one of the things I'm finding very confusing is to how to get the information, where these shots are at, who can get them where. There may be a report that we can get on a weekly basis or something letting us know that that you can go here or this is available there because I have no clue where somebody to send somebody to get a shot uh, or how to even do that if they don't have internet, if they don't have access to a cell phone. I have no clue how to refer somebody. So if we could figure out a way to maybe get that information that we can get it out of the hands of the people that need the information, that would be very helpful. And I don't know how to start or where to begin with that. Thank you, Commissioner Stevens. Uh, I've already your hand up by Commissioner Amberman. Commissioner Amberman, your mic is open. Thank you. And, and I just wanted to, uh, to mention on that, Mark, it has been extremely difficult for us who are always begging for, uh, you know, 
events to serve our community. Uh, when we get an opportunity and somebody like Centara or another entity let us know that there's going to be an opportunity for vaccinations, usually they let, they let us know four days, five days in advance, and that makes it very stressful for us to make sure that people in the community get the information and then start registering individuals. But, uh, you know, I also want to take the opportunity to thank Sylvia, Teresa, and, and others in this uh, Human Rights Commission. They helped me register uh, last time when I, and, and, and of course, uh, Ginger, thank you so very much for registering individuals, you know, during the time that I had a death in my family and I needed support. And just to let you know, uh, we had like 600 slots, all of them filled up before, you know, the, the deadline. And I just wanted to inform you that I reached out to the uh, members of the different embassies, like the, the, you know, at least six different countries, Latino countries. They have the lists of people that live in certain regions. And so I reached out to them and asked them to also help me register people. And, and they did. So they called individuals in the uh, area code numbers of the cities that they had, and uh, they were able to also register people from Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador. And so I just wanted to give you that information. Thank you. Thank okay. you, Commissioner Amberman. Okay, um, I don't see any other virtual hands at the moment. Let me check with our commissioners on the phone. Commissioner Zoberman? Commissioner Zoberman, are you still with us? Okay, I think we might have lost him. Uh, Commissioner Anderson, any comment no, no, or discussion? No, thank you. I, well, I, well, sorry, I did want to say that, that I believe Councilman Aaron Rouse um, came up with an HRT uh, vaccination, something where along the lines of free transportation for um, residents that are looking to get throughout Hampton Road that are looking to go to vaccination appointments. So that should be coming down the pipe. I just saw it on his Facebook right before this meeting started. So that hopefully should amplify and help some of our residents be able to get to their appointments without thinking about the cost of transportation. Great, great news. Thank you, Commissioner Anderson. Uh, Commissioner Mancall, any discussion on the report for the COVID-19 task force? No. Okay, thank you. Okay, I don't see any other virtual hands at this moment. Okay, um, we have about 14 minutes and um, the next uh, report was supposed to be uh, for nominating committee. We um, vote in June and if you have a quick report, that would be good. And then uh, after that, anybody who really needs to speak uh, needs to um, raise their hand and speak. Uh, Jojo, Teresa. Uh, Commissioner Arencio, your mic is open. Yeah, hey, everybody. Um, I've got about four nominations so far. Uh, I've got a duty coming up uh, with uh, Dominique tomorrow on available dates in the next three weeks. I'd like to meet up. Uh, right now, it's just myself and, the, and Rabbi Zoberman on the, on the committee, so the more the merrier. And um, we can, we'll do that. We'll set it up with Dominique and get it going, get it done. Um. Did you say it's just you and the rabbi? Uh, Teresa, yes, you right now. Yeah, for the nominating committee. Yeah. I hadn't gotten, I put out an email. Well, we put the email if anyone wants to serve, just the email myself or Dominic. I haven't got anybody else. So if anybody wants to serve, come on out. Yeah, I think we need to have um, more people um, on the nominating committee, but please let JoJo know. Yep. Okay, since we're running uh, short of time, um, does anybody a uh, liaison report or a committee report that I haven't called out that needs to report anything out? Uh, raise your voice, your hand if you have anything to report. I see a uh, real, I see a real hand up by Commissioner Taylor. <laughs> Commissioner Taylor, your mic is open. Yes, uh, here at seven thirty, <clears throat> the Hampton Rose Black Caucus will be doing a community uh, forum with uh, on uh, 21st century policing uh, with our uh, new chief of police, Newgate, and Chief uh, Boone from Norfolk. 
uh, everyone is invited. Uh, they can't discuss any cases that are opening and pending, but it will be talking about uh, how to build trust between the community and policing and the police department and how can the community and uh, uh, and the, com the community and the police department can build a safer community moving forward. Thank you, Commissioner Taylor. I have a virtual hand up by Commissioner Stanley. Commissioner Stanley, your mic is open. Thanks, Dominique. First of all, Ron, I thought that was at 6.30 tonight, not 7.30. Is it is it seven thirty? Six thirty. Oh, okay. And um, would you send? Did you send the link out so that those of us that might want to? Uh, I, I, so we've got it. I I saw that it was a bit. Go to the Hampton Rose Black Caucus and and click on the link from our website. Okay, so that's the best way to get on the link, or you can call in, right? That was my understanding. Yes, you can do that too. Or if anyone doesn't have it, I can email it. I can text it to you. Okay, I, I'd definitely like to attend, Ron, so thank you. Uh, I'm going to text it to you. Look, okay. check your phone. And Dominique, I was going to um, uh, uh, report out um, or chair a uh, season for nonviolence. Um, our mental health um, uh, task force under the leadership of Tommy, um, you know, part of our work with the season for nonviolence collective this year and our, our newest commissioners, um, Hannah uh, Mancall and Morgan Ellis are both involved, but we, the, the young people had decided to make um, mental health the focus. And so there is this huge mental health wellness project that's got more partners than you can imagine, starting with the Vibe District and all kinds of others, and a rock painting project for inspirational messages. So we want to um, give a shout out to Mark Stevens with Zeros. And please, any commissioners that want to go down and be a part of painting rocks with your children, grandchildren. I mean, this project has really taken weights. Um, but but remember that the, the focus of it is to normalize mental health conversations. We've got to become comfortable with making sure that um, people that are struggling with mental health conditions are, are, are being treated with human rights in the community and that we've got resources for them. So anyone who can attend and uh, Dominique, I think you sent all this, the, the poster for all this, but say it out loud is the next upcoming panel. And it's going to be young people that take this hour to just share their stories. Once again, normalizing the conversations um, through NAMI, which is a wonderful resource for all of us. And so any commissioners that could be a part of that, the flyer has been sent out um, and, and it will also be recordable that we can share it on our Facebook so that we can amplify this message. So Morgan and Hannah, thank you. Hannah's taken it into the Jewish Community Center. Um, Morgan has taken it off to schools as well as all the other students and um, nonviolent collective young people uh, that are really um, bringing this, this project to, to great fruition. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Stanley. Okay, did anyone else have anything else to report? Um, I'm not seeing any of the virtual hands. Just for me to um, tag on to the mental health. Um, I sent it out, but it, I don't think it went out. I'll send it again. Um, the uh, president of the, uh, it's, we're actually called the Council of United Philippine Organizations is holding a, um, virtual forum on April 13th at 6 p.m. And I'll send that, uh, it's for mental health uh, during the COVID crisis. And I'll send that out to everybody again. Thanks, um, Sylvia. That's also the same date as the Say It Out Loud panel. So if everybody does one or the other, that would be great. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes it just happens. That's good. Yeah, that's good. It's good. We're getting attention. Uh, anybody else have any, um, anything that needs to be reported? Uh, I don't see any virtual hands, but let me check with our commissioners on the phone. Uh, Commissioner Zoberman? No, but thank you to everyone. And uh, thanks for you for your great work always. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Zoberman. Uh, Commissioner Anderson? No, I don't have a report, but I just want to comment. This might not be related to what we're doing here. I know the block by block was a presentation we had earlier. But I noticed that the last skin underpass kind of going towards Target Walmart, they were fencing up underneath that underpass that 
um, obviously is to block people from, uh, you know, sleeping there and things of that nature, which I totally understand. But I think that we should have a conversation about um, also placing signage and resources for those members who are looking for housing, whether it's the regional housing crisis hotline or the center overall switch stuck. Um, I think, you know, having the fencing up is definitely a deterrent, but it isn't a solution for the people that are transient and homeless. That's all. Thank you, Dominique. You're welcome, and thank you, Commissioner Anderson. Uh, okay. Commissioner Mancall, did you have anything to report or, or comment on? No. Okay, thank you. Um, and real quickly, I think we have, I saw that uh, uh, Tracy, one, I'm sorry. One moment, uh, Chair Nearest, I have a, a virtual hand up by Commissioner Gunn. Commissioner Gunn, your mic is open. Hi, I just had a question. Um, this is not really. Well, sort of related to business. I could not get my hand up earlier. Um, I had a bit of a technical issue, but um, I received a um, COVID vaccination shot, um, Pfizer, three weeks ago on Saturday, and I'm scheduled to have another one coming up on this Saturday. But I've, I mean, who I, the person that I went and did with her obviously not too reliable. Um, does anyone know of any organizations that are doing walk up appointments for Saturdays or walk in clinics at all? Uh, I don't know of any, but let's um, contact the, have you contacted the health department to tell them? Yes, I have. Actually, um, I, I think that there are some vaccination sites at the Pembroke Mall, um, uh, isn't it true, uh, Teresa? And usually walk-ins, but I don't know about this particular day, Saturday. Uh, Commissioner, no. uh, Commissioner Stanley, your mic is open. Okay. Um, take, you know, if you've got your card, as long as it's that date or the date after, they'll take you right in. That's like an appointment. So if it's a second shot, you just go right to, and you know where, you know, military circle, you go up, up Virginia's Boulevard, turn left on Glen Rock, it's right there. And I'm, I'm telling you, it, it takes minutes. Yeah. That's what yeah. I recommend. I'll, I'm, I'm happy to help you offline, but um, if you've got your vaccination, uh, do you have the card that says that your date is a certain date? I do. For your second shot, that's usually what they give you. You take that in and that's considered an appointment. Yeah, okay. and this is the Mesa's um, location. Right, we're old Mesa's location. Mesa's location, yeah. But Jamal, I, I would definitely recommend that that is the way to go. Okay, I appreciate that, thank you. I mean, okay. I try like several different avenues and none of them been for Yeah, yeah. Call, so call me offline, Jamal, I'll tell you, I'll, and, and I can tell you the address and everything, the hours and all. Okay, thank great. You. Love our networking. Um, I noticed that we had another uh, citizen join us on Tr Tracy Liquid used to be our, um, uh, our liaison, but also um, we have Evan Nied um, to speak. Uh, Mr. Nied, your mic is open. Yeah, hi, sorry, it's uh, Need. Need, Evan I'm Nied. sorry. Sorry. Oh, no problem, no problem at all. Uh, hi, so it's so great to speak to you all, Rabbi Zoberman asked me to speak to you guys a couple months ago, so I, I thought I'd say hi. My name's Evan Need. again. I'm a junior at Kempsville High School. And so I wanted to speak to you guys a while back about the, the gender discrimination that was going on within the Neptune Festival involving the Royal Court and their lack of access for women and uh, teen boys to get involved in their business networking events, uh, which is the Royal Court. Luckily, of prep through uh, the, the Virginia pilot, as well as through city council members, I was eventually able to get them to overturn their decision. And now high school boys and uh, women will now be allowed to participate in the Royal Court for the Neptune Festival. So I thought I'd just let you guys know about that. Yes, well, oh, thank you. Um, I know we um, referred you to Nancy Creech and I guess um, you guys had several meetings and worked it out. Yeah, yeah, and so it was all able to work out. So um, well, I thought I'd just let some of you guys know since I'd, I'd spoken to a couple members of the Human Rights Commission about it before. Yes, we'll we'll expect you to wave to us, okay? 
course. All right. Thank you all. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, Tracy, look where okay. Uh, Tracy, your mic is open. Okay. Hi, everybody. It's Hi. nice. It's nice to see everybody. I've seen Teresa and is recently and Dominique, you are doing awesome. Oh my god. You're <laughs> Thank great. You. <laughs> so yeah. Um I just I wanted to um thank you guys for the uh post about the anti Asian hate movement or you know what I mean. And um because I've been, you know, along with a lot of other people, been a part of um discussions about if there's anything going on here. And maybe this is something that I could have asked Dominique about since I know, you know, we track human rights abuses or complaints. I I just wanted to find out too if if anybody's reporting it to y'all. Okay. I haven't got any calls um here at the office. Okay. In, in regards to any kind of um anti Asian um, activity happening now. I'll probably connect y'all with y'all. Do you know Petula Moy, Sylvia, or anybody, or Dominique? She's yeah. the Asian Roads Asian Alliance. Yes, I do. She's a very close friend. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, and just that. Thank you, guys. And then also, Beatrice, thank you for the um opening up the vaccination because my aunt and I we went, and my aunt is over seventy, and it was great. So thank you, thank you so much. Cause I got caught in some email situation. And so I was able, even though I was able to last month that I got caught in some internet thing. And then I guess it's, it's just nice to see everybody mm -hmm. again. And I did join Mark Monday, you know, for the walk around the oceanfront, which was really cool. And I would love to, see, you know, join him again. So that I, I would recommend it. That was awesome. Right. I, I want to thank, thank you for doing that, Tracy. And I have already added you to the uh, citizens member of the uh, independent observers since you did that. Thank you so much for doing that. Can you drop us a few lines about what you saw? Yeah, oh. I, I, you know, what I had discussed with Mark, I thought it was good. You know, I think it's exciting when, when we have, you know, expression in that way and police were not um, visible, but I know that they were there through Mark. And I thought it went really well. The, 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 mood, the tone I thought was really positive. I didn't get to hear what Mark had said, but uh, other members of RAC, we joined them and I was really good. So the, I'm pleased. And what I had shared with Mark is I was there that night, like during the Greek Fest riots before you, you know, what formed you guys, it, you know, back then. And I didn't realize like how kind of traumatized I was from, you know, at 18. So it's just kind of, see how everything has evolved including this commission and here we are again with you know the same kind of issues but in a different capacity but yeah i think that program is really awesome all right well thank you so much for, drop by don't be a stranger um and we'll see you at the uh independent observers uh meeting on monday was it monday monday at 3 30 yeah i'll add i'll add you to the um to the um the the presenter list so then i'll send you the link as well so you can join and thank everybody on the commission i've seen like ron taylor and the equity inclusion and diversity council through bb schools and i mean everybody here does such awesome work and i don't know thank you for having me having been a part of you guys you know it was a short period but dominique is awesome so i, I was like you're in good hand. you're in better hands well thank you tracy uh, anybody have anything else? We can open the mic and say good night. I have a virtual hand by Commissioner Taylor. Commissioner Taylor, your mic is open. Oh, only thing I was saying is I was going to tell you, I forwarded you the link mm -hmm. to send yep. out to all the commissioners maybe that, if, that want to be a part of the forum. Yes, I'm sending that right now. Okay. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Rod. Okay. All right. Open mics.
Say good night. Open my good night. Good night. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Good night. Good night, Rabbi Good night, Good night. night Commissioner so Anderson. Much. Love you all. Thank you so Love much. You. God Bye. bless you. Bye, Thank you for your uh, remarks at the beginning of the meeting.